This unit is about upsampling. In many situations, we might not be interested in image level predictions, but rather in pixel level predictions. For instance, if we want to um, predict a depth map, that is a depth at every pixel location, or the motion at every pixel location, or a semantic label map, as in this case here, where for every pixel, for every input pixel, we want to determine what is the semantic class label, such as tree or pole or car or road or sidewalk or building that is visible at that pixel location. If that's the case, then pure downsampling is not sufficient, but we also need to upsample again. Right. And this is an example of such an architecture where we have both convolution and pooling operations as well as upsampling and convolution operations to go from the low resolution back to the high resolution. Now, why do we need to downsample in the first place? Well, if we wouldn't downsample, we wouldn't get any strong features that have a large receptive field. And therefore, downsampling is necessary to aggregate over larger image regions more quickly with a, a limited a number of parameters in the network. Upsampling then yields results at the same resolution as the input and often there's uh, some ResNet-like skip connections that pass information directly from the early layers to the upsampling layers in order to um, maintain a high level of accuracy at boundaries of objects, for instance. But this is a very common architecture for such an um, encoder-decoder network, often also called a unit architecture because it has this U shape. There's multiple ways in which upsampling can be implemented. So here are some examples. <clears throat> For instance, what we could do is we could use nearest neighbor upsampling where we simply um, uh, set each um, element to the nearest neighbor um, based on uh, the input feature tensor. We can also use a bilinear um, upsampling or something that's also very common is the bed of nails upsampling where we simply insert sparsely the locations of the input at the output and everywhere in between we uh, add a zero and then this is followed by a convolutional layer to fill in these missing components which works actually quite well. So the type of upsampling that you want to use really depends on the application and different types of upsampling have different artifacts for instance, if you use bilinear upsampling, you often get two smooth results. If you use bed of nails upsampling, sometimes this nail like this is called bed of nails because some of these values stick out and others are zero. These nail artifacts are still visible in the output. So there's different ups and downsides to, to any of these upsampling techniques. Um, <clears throat> there's also something called max unpooling. In, in max unpooling, we first remember which element was maximum during the pooling operation. Uh, so for instance, here in this, uh, for, from amongst those four elements, six was the maximum. Amongst those four elements, eight was the maximum and so forth. And then when we upsample some particular feature map, so this is, at, this is in, in the downsampling stage and this is in the upsampling stage, then we take that value that we want to upsample and using this bed of nails representation, we insert it at the location where the maximum was found during the downsampling. And the idea behind this is also to, to keep some of the high level details and structures, but it requires always corresponding pairs of downsampling and upsampling layers. So it cannot be implemented in any arbitrary unit architecture. However, this is the approach that has been used in SegNet, um, one of these um, foundational neural network encoder-decoder architecture for semantic segmentation, which I, 
I should here. Another alternative to um, upsampling is to use dilated convolutions. Uh, for dilated convolutions, you don't need to downsample because dilated convolutions are a technique to increase the receptive field size while keeping the um, spatial resolution of the feature maps constant. In dilated convolutions, you're um, having a multiplier to the delta x of the input tensor that effectively disperses or distributes the uh, sampling locations, locations where the kernel is multiplied to the input. And so with different d's you can get a, a very large kernel without actually requiring more parameters because it, it queries the input more sparsely. Now this works to some extent, but even in the uh, original or one of the original publications here that is shown here at the bottom, the authors still required um, some standard uh, backbone in order to actually um, make this work. But the idea here really is that you can increase the receptive field without having to increase the parameters or reducing the spatial dimensions. So you can do this um, at the end of your network to uh, with a very with very few parameters refine your output at the same resolution and that works very well. Here's another illustration um, where you can see how this is progressively growing. So in the first stage, um, <clears throat> the second stage and third stage, you can see the receptive field size. Okay. Um, yeah, examples where this can be applied is uh, semantic segmentation, um, depth or optical flow. <clears throat> so here's an example for semantic segmentation. You can see um, um, the problem of standard unit architectures can be to some extent be mitigated by these dilated convolutions as they are capable of, of preserving some of these details better. However, this is a a little disclaimer here is that this is a paper from 2016 so state-of-the-art results in semantic segmentation are have, have much more advanced since uh, since then 